What is up? My name is Matt Workman for Cinematography Database, and in this video series, we're going to be looking at how to get started with Cine Designer R3 and Cinema 4D for 2018. And so what we did in the last episode is we installed the plugin Cine Designer, so we have that. Again, you won't have all this stuff, you'll just have a couple things, the stuff you need. Um, you've hopefully put this button there, and if you hit B, your content browser comes up, you've made a preset library, and you've started to install the stuff that you wanted. And I did this off screen, I added a stand, and I added a camera, I mean a light, a light. So right now let's build one of these camera rigs, I'll show you how they work, how you look through it, and then how to save the rig so you don't have to do this every single time. So let's start by bringing in our uh, camera, a tripod, head, and a dolly, okay? So as you double click them, they come into the viewport here, and what you want to do immediately with uh, Cine Designer objects and rigs is you want to create a CD rig, Cine, Cine Designer rig. And if you come from the older plugins, you can see that the new rig has our logo on it, and the dolly has a dolly logo. The head has kind of a tiny gearhead logo, kind of hard to see. And then there's another rig with the camera stuff inside of it. And so this is the new way that this stuff gets laid out. And if you want this stuff to all connect together and work, what you want to do is take it like this and put it inside of, I'm left clicking and dragging into that rig and then magically, boom, uh, everything connects together. And just for you guys, I'm gonna be turning off this because I don't think you'll be able to see that. Uh, I kind of have a developer version of this. And uh, there we go, we've built our camera. Now, let's see, uh, this is for people who are pretty new or haven't done this for a while perhaps. If you grab the top object here, the CD rig, you can double click it and name it and I'm gonna call this Red Fisher 10, like that for now. You can name it whatever you want, doesn't matter. And if you uh, grab that top object, that's where you're gonna be able to move it around like this. And you get to move by hitting, I think, E. Hitting E will give you move. And then if you go up here as well, that's scale, which don't scale this stuff. Scaling breaks a lot of this, I think. I wouldn't scale it. Uh, you can get to rotate from there. And again, you can get to move. And if you wanna reset things, uh, they're all down here as well. You can set these all to zero. Oh, that didn't work. Reset them all to zero and here you are. So this is how you move the actual rig around. Um, and we'll do an animation in the next video, I think. And uh, if you grab these assets down here, although they'll give you the handles, you actually can't move them because they're all tied together using this CD rig. So this is the system and the logic for building out um, cameras and lights. Anything that's from Cine Designer or Cinematography Database, they need to usually be connected together using this CD rig. And that's kind of the power of is that you can switch these all out. I can put in a different tripod head, a different camera, a different dolly, and they will just automatically build themselves together. So that's kind of the workflow. You hit B, you bring in what you want, and you shove them all in a CD rig. So uh, for the people that, again, are very new to this, uh, let's, let's look at some of these controls. So we're going to go to this here, and we're going to bring in a figure. And if you have R18 or R19, I believe this comes in at scale instead of being like gigantic. Um, so hopefully you have one of those versions. If it's not, just make it smaller so that it's like, looks like this. Uh, we'll use this person, our figure as our stand-in. And we wanna look through this camera now. So we wanna go to window and you wanna say new view panel. And then you wanna grab these little kind of like this box of dots here and you wanna drag it You'll see that it gives you a couple places you can put it. You can put it right there is where I like to have this stuff. And so now we have another view and you wanna go to cameras, use camera, red epic dragon. And now we're looking through our camera. Pretty awesome. So again, you can uh, move the camera like this. So we're dollying in and out. And if you grab the model 10 dolly, it has its own list of attributes or Cine Designer controls in this case. And if you're in coordinates or basic, you can just make your way over to Cine Designer Controls. Everything from Cinematography Database will have these controls and everything will also have this, which is new, and R3. You can change the materials of it. So uh, we'll look at that in a second um, with the red camera specifically. But for the most part, you don't need that. So the dolly controls, you can move the dolly uh, center column up and down. And hopefully, if you just play with these and you look at them, they all make sense and they work like the real world version. There's a couple different ways of mounting the camera. So the SLT front head is changing. That's the LHT, that's the low head if I come into it. You'll see that that physically places the camera lower. And these are all 
to the best of our ability, made to scale like the real world versions. And that's the idea is that everything in Cinema Design is real world scale and matches one to one as close as possible with a real world version. And we have the center mount, which if it, you do it like that, doesn't make any sense. You gotta bring it back down to zero. And uh, this is a JL Fisher center, center mount that you would then put probably a riser and then a jib on, something like that. So a whole bunch of different ways to connect to this. And then right above that, we have our tripod head with pan and tilt. Uh, I'm gonna switch it back to not center mount because it looks a little silly, like that. Raise it up a little bit. And but yeah, pan and tilt is going on there. Again, we have our materials here, if you wanted to change it. The red camera is being contained by another CD rig. So inside of that is a base plate. I'll get up a little bit closer to this thing. Uh, a base plate that goes back and forth, depending on how big the camera body is. It is a 12 inch base plate, I believe. Uh, I'm gonna have more base plates in the future, hopefully. This doesn't work right now. This is to change the length of the rods. Doesn't work, I haven't updated that. Um, here's our red controls. So we have our different sensor sizes and I realize I have to upgrade this to 8K and I'm missing some formats, but these are the majority of them. Um, so you can switch to two to one. Actually, I guess that doesn't change anything. 5.5, uh, it'll be slightly tighter. 4K is a tighter and, and, and et cetera, et cetera. So this will take into account the size of the sensor and then you enter the focal length here. So we can go to like a 50 or like an 18. And so that's how that stuff works. You can change the white balance, but don't do that yet. I'll have to, we'll do that within the rendering episode. And new to R3 with this particular camera, I hope to do more of this stuff, is that you can change the LCD off and on. The battery can come off and on because you can put this on like a, a robot arm or on our Freefly Movie. Uh, in that case, you don't wanna have that stuff on there. And so um, to wrap up uh, looking at these basic controls with the RED camera, uh, I wanna show you why you would use the materials. So in this one, we have uh, material controls. You can change the body, the LCD, and the battery, but you can change the LCD screen material. So the idea is that you would probably render out your view and then put it in there. And the way that that basically works, I guess I won't do that all the way here, but you would go to color and you would pick an image. I'm gonna pick this one for now, which doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna click no. It's also kind of a gigantic JPEG. I think that's like 16K or something. Yeah, it's a 16K JPEG. But anyway, you would put an image in there and then what you can do is you can select the red camera and you can drag this material onto the LCD screen because it's gonna take a second and now that's the, that's the image that shows up on the screen. So that's that workflow. If materials is just way beyond you right now, you haven't even made a material before, then don't worry about it. But for the more uh, intermediate advanced people that we have this functionality now to be able to change that in and out. Uh, I'm actually going to undo that because I wanna save this rig and uh, I'll just finish up. The lens doesn't do anything. It's literally a placeholder. Um, I don't have that many lenses yet. I wanna add more, but it doesn't actually do anything. It just changes where the camera's located and has a physical space uh, to make it look right. And then this is the actual Cinema 4D camera. This is pretty advanced. There's a lot of stuff to do here, but um, basic and coordinate, never have to touch those. In object, this is where you're gonna set the focus. So there's two different ways to do that. You can click focus distance. You can click this little arrow here. And then in the camera's view, you can click on the object you wanna be in focus. And you might have this on by default. If you go to filter and turn on camera, uh, you can see that this little dot here will show you where in space. So this is kind of like your little cine tape or tape measure. This will show you what's in focus, um, like that. So we put it in focus here. And what else is gonna happen in this space? Uh, for physical, you can change this as well, the f-stop. This is gonna control the depth of field, how shallow, it, how shallow the depth of field is. It will not change how bright the image is. This is just purely to say how shallow is the depth of field. You would change that here as well. And you can actually look at the depth of field in the viewport, probably do that in a different episode. So I feel like this is getting a little bit long, but I wanna just show this, um, I guess like all together. I'm gonna zero out all the things. I'll leave, the, I'll leave this here. And um, what some people were asking in the last build was uh, for a way to control all of these all at once. So instead of having to like click through the different things, um, which can be a little bit slow, we wanted a way to control everything all at once. And that's already been built into Cinema 4D and I'll show you how to do that right now. Might be a little bit overwhelming for new people, so don't do this if you're brand new to this. But you wanna click uh, the Fisher Dolly or whatever thing you wanna control at once. Um, and say I wanna be able to change the center column height here. So I wanna be able to right click that and we're gonna say add to HUD. 
And maybe it's hard to see, but if you hold control now and left click, you can move around this little on-screen uh, control. I'm gonna put it over here for now. And if you slide it back and forth, you have the same controls you have um, over here. So next, with the head, you wanna pan and tilt, so you're gonna hold control and select both, and then you add to HUD. Uh, control, left click, drag it over here. And for the red camera, I probably just wanna change the focal length. And I'm gonna add to HUD, control, left click, drag over there. So to control these all at once, I know this isn't like perfect and I don't actually like this workflow, but it is helpful for some people perhaps in certain ways. You need to select everything. And so now what you can do is you can kind of like reorganize where these are gonna be. I'm gonna kind of just center them for now like this. I think something like this. Again, I'm holding control and left clicking. And so now you can move the dolly back and forth. So say I'm gonna go like this. And now I can change the height. I can pan over and I have all the controls I had um, separately all in one place now on the screen. And you don't have as fine control over these sliders. You can double click and enter the numbers like negative 35 if you wanted to. And then I can change the focal length. I would double click and say like 50 and then I can move up. And maybe this is a way that you wanna work like this. And then if you uh, let go the screen, the displays go away. If you click them individually, they're there. And then if you select all of them again, you get all of the controls at once. So the last thing I wanna show you is how to save this rig, especially if you're putting controls on it. You don't wanna do that every time. This took a few minutes to build this, didn't it? So we wanna go back to, I guess I can select all of them. Uh, I wanna bring these all back to zero, zero. And I feel like a good starting focal length is usually around 35. And I also wanna bring the position of this dolly back to zero. So say I wanna save this setup. I don't wanna to have to build this every single time. You're probably gonna use something pretty similar. I'm gonna hit B, bring up my content browser again, and I'm gonna create a new preset library and I'm gonna call this one CDR3, wait a minute, CDR3 physical uh, user. You can name it whatever you want. You can name it per project, whatever makes sense for you. And what you wanna do now, as you could probably guess, is you wanna grab the top one here and drag it in. Give it a second. And now you have all of that stuff that you just did saved in the content browser that you can bring up again. So I'm gonna close this. We're in a new file. I hit B and say I don't wanna go build all that stuff again. I can just double click this. And there it is, the same exact rig we just built and I can recreate that scene very quickly. And I even have, I believe, all of the on-screen controls. So that's pretty cool. So this is the new workflow, uh, no builder scripts. We're using content browser only. You can save your rigs here instead of the old way we saved them, which wasn't very good. It was very limiting and then not visual to know what they were. And what else to say about this? If you wanna get rid of these, uh, you can right click them and say remove like this. And that will remove them from the local copy. It will not remove them from this one. You'd have to resave it to get rid of them. And again, if you wanna look through this camera, uh, use camera like this. So now it's very fast. If you want to start adding multiple cameras like this, you're going to be able to double click and bring them in. And before I end this, I know this is a lot of information. This is probably too much uh, for everybody all at once is that I don't recommend um, doing this. I don't recommend clicking a rig like this and using the native copy function in Cinema 4D. You can hold control in Cinema 4D and make a copy. I wouldn't do that, and you can also do that in the uh, outliner here, holding control, you can make another one like this. I wouldn't do that because unfortunately it doesn't duplicate the materials and eventually certain rigs just stop working if you do this. The best way to do this um, for now, unfortunately, as fun as that is, is to just bring in another one. That's the cleanest way to do this. One by one, bring things in for now. Um, so that wraps it up in this one. What did we do? Uh, to recap, we built uh, a camera using the CD rig, and I showed you how to control them, and then I showed you how to save a pre-built one with user controls uh, on the screen on the HUD into a new content uh, library. And so hopefully this makes sense that as you download things, you build rigs like a sky panel and a stand or a, like, you know, a uh, softbox set up a certain way that you really liked, you can just save it bring it back in. This is the big, one of the bigger differences of Cine Designer R3 design-wise 
user interface wise compared to R1, R2. I personally like it a lot better. I use this program every day and I hope you guys like it as well. If you have any questions about this, I know this was a lot, head over to the forums at cinematographydb.com. That's really the best. Also, you can leave questions right here on the YouTube video. Um, I don't check this YouTube channel as much. It's more like kind of a place for me to dump tutorials, but I'll check them out, but really head over to the forum. So in the next video, we're gonna look at animating this stuff. We're gonna make a camera move and we're gonna render it really, really, really quickly using hardware um, OpenGL rendering, which I never showed before for some reason, but we're gonna do that in the next video.